there folks, Mr. G here with another educational video. This time we're going to be talking about order of operations with fractions. Now order of operations we did with integers and another way we can think about order of operations is using this acronym FEDMAS. We've talked about this before. If you want to quickly read this over I'd encourage you. We start with brackets so we simplify. We do some exponents which we haven't really talked about yet so don't worry too much about that. Division and multiplication from left to right, adding and subtracting from left to right. Now the only part of this that I would add for fractions isn't a rule, but just a tip. And that tip is to, whenever you can, reduce your fractions during the question. So sometimes you'll end up multiplying things together and then adding it to something else. Before you add it to that thing, try reducing your fraction. It'll usually make the adding a little bit easier. All right, let's try this problem here. Just like before, we're looking for brackets, no brackets, then exponents, no exponents, so the first thing we're going to do is this division. Now in order to do this division here, we need to flip this second fraction and change it to multiplication. Once we're here, we can multiply the tops and the bottoms together. Now at this point, you could jump straight into this subtraction. But I'd like you to remind you about this tip right here. Because we can actually reduce this fraction we can reduce this by dividing the top and the bottom by 3. By reducing the second fraction, now it's a lot easier to find a common denominator. In this case, we can see that if we make this a denominator of 4, we can multiply the top and the bottom by 2, and then we can answer our question, and our answer would be equal to 1 over 4. If we didn't do that reducing, now we'd have to find a common denominator between 4 and 6, those are bigger numbers, generally it's going to be a little bit harder, and we know that there's no number we could multiply 4 by, that's a whole number, to give us a 6. So we'd have to go through the, the whole process of finding a common denominator, where we're doing multiples of these, or maybe multiplying them together. If we reduce it, it's a lot easier to see what the common denominator could be. That's why I think this tip is really important. And it's especially important in harder questions where the numbers get a lot bigger. Speaking of harder questions with bigger numbers, let's take a look at this one. And my goodness, this definitely got a little bit harder. But just like before, we're going to go through the exact same steps for bed mass. First off, our brackets here. Now, like I said in the previous videos, I always like to have my fractions for adding and subtracting in improper form. So I'm going to convert these, this one into an improper fraction. Here, we can't multiply 3 by a whole number to give us an 8, so we have to find a common denominator. In this case, 24 will work. Over here, we'd have to multiply the top and the bottom by 3. Over here, the top and the bottom by 8. 27 minus 16 gives us 11 over 24. And then we know we're going to be doing some multiplication here, so I'm going to turn these into improper fractions because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need them as improper fractions soon anyways. Now at this point, you might be tempted, oh look, they have the same denominator, I should add these two together. But remember, after our brackets and exponents comes multiplication, not addition. So don't fall into that trap. For this one, we can multiply the tops and the bottoms together, and we'll get 99 over 48. Now before we try and add these two together, remember, Let's see if we can reduce our fraction. And in fact, we can. We can divide the top and the bottom by 3. And now our fraction's a lot smaller. And we can see that 16 will work as a common denominator. So we need to multiply the bottom here by 8 and the top by 8. Now that we have our common denominator, we can add these two together. And you'd think we'd be done. We have one more step to do. This said to answer with a mixed fraction. So we've got to turn this into a mixed fraction. 16 goes into 89 five times. 5 times 16, that gives us 80. We get a remainder of 9. So our answer would be 5 and 9 over 16. Whew! That was a tough one. Definitely some big numbers, but remember, if we reduce it part of the way through, our numbers get a lot smaller and a lot more manageable. The other key thing to watch out for is just because there's a temptation here to simplify these two, remember that we are going in bed mass order. So you've got to make sure that you don't jump ahead and do this, this addition here, even if it looks like the really easy step to do. 
All right, let's check your understanding. There's a question on the screen, grab a piece of paper, pause the video, and see if you can solve it for yourself. All done? Great, let's go over the answer. Now the first thing to think about is, well right here we've got an addition and they both have the same denominator. So there's a lot of temptation here to just add these two together. They've got the same denominator. But remember, we're doing division before we would do addition. In this case, because we have no brackets, we don't have to worry about it and no exponents. So the first thing we would do is division. And we'll notice the first one on the left here is this division right here. So that's where we're gonna start. Now in order to do division, these both need to be improper fractions, so I'm going to turn this into an improper fraction. And you know what? Let's turn all of them into improper fractions right now, because me personally, I really like working with improper fractions. I find that adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing are a lot easier. So I'm just going to change all of them to improper fractions first. Now that that's done, we can start with this first division here. Again, we start on the left. When we're dividing, that means that we're multiplying by the reciprocal of the second fraction, so this would be the same as 8 over 3 times 6 over 5. Again, don't get tempted to add these two together, even if they have the same denominator. We're doing this multiplication first. So there we go. Now we can move on to our next division. Again, when we divide, we multiply by the reciprocal here. Now before we move on to our next division here, one thing that's important to remember, any time during this problem that you think you can reduce a fraction, you should. If you notice here, these are both divisible by 3. So I'm going to divide the top here by 3 and the bottom by 3. So that way I'm dealing with smaller numbers when I move on to my next step. Remember, dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so we got to take the reciprocal of this, which just means flipping the fraction. Once we're here, we can multiply the tops and the bottoms again. Another reminder. Again, before we would add these two together, what we should try and do is reduce our fraction. These are both even, which means I can divide the top and the bottom by 2. My fraction here is still even on the top and the bottom, so I could divide by 2 again. But you might recognize that this is a multiple of 4 and this is a multiple of 4, so I can actually divide the top and bottom by 4 here. And suddenly, with a little bit of reducing, a really big numbered problem over here turns into one where all of our numbers are pretty small and it's a lot easier to find a common denominator. For 3 and 5, 15 would work. So here we multiply the bottom by 5 to get 15, so multiply the top by 5. Here we multiply the bottom by 3, multiply the top by 3. We can add the tops together. We can't reduce this fraction, but if you remember all the way back at the start, it said to answer with a mixed fraction, so we've got to convert this into a mixed fraction. 15 goes into 62 four times, and gives us a remainder of 2. So our answer as a mixed fraction would be 4 and 2 over 15. Deep breath. That was a tough one. Thanks for tuning into this video, folks. I'll see you all in the next one.